So this is the concept that is now a reality. Road to a Table, Part 5. If you're new to this channel, subscribe if you like us, and remember to hit the bell to be notified for the next coming videos. What he's, what he's making right now is the, it's gonna be an aluminum block that has, it's essentially gonna be a U shape, like a kind of like U channel, but the inner parts are gonna taper. Um, that way when we put it in here and we push it down, it wedges between here and makes this joint really tight and it's adjustable. That's the whole point is that right. as, uh, if this moves, if the wood moves, if it shrinks, it'll kind of push it out. If it expands, you can tighten it and. Um, you don't, that way you don't have to glue the joint and worry about that joint failing in 10 years or 5 years, whatever it is. Yunkin. What's up? What's up, man? Darren? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, man. Let's check out your face. Oh, yeah. Dude, you got all this stuff in your shop, man? Yeah, man. Well, what do you what do you normally what's your name? My name is Darren Tiffany. Yeah, Darren, so what what do you do normally in your shop here? Uh, so I got all of this equipment because I decided to start making watches, so. Oh, you make actual actual yeah, watches, yeah, like so. the bands and everything, or just like the... Uh, so I'm making the case, the bezel, case back, dial, eventually hands and crowns and wow. maybe some mechanical parts too soon. So is that a watch you made right there? Yeah. Dude, can we see it? Of course, man. So what is this watch called? Do you do you have do you give them certain names? So this is just a prototype. So this is the second watch that I've ever completed. What? So I'm doing a production run right now. I'm making 20 watches to sell. That's crazy. So you're gonna have like a logo and your name. Yeah, and your yeah. Brand. So I've been working on some logo designs, and then I'm just using my name, just DM Tiffany timepieces. Dude. That feels like significant. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's happening. So you're doing all the the like the motor, the mechanical. Uh, motor? so I'm buying the movements. Oh, the movements. Yeah, okay. so they're Swiss made. Oh, perfect. Uh, eventually, I'll be doing my own like decoration on the movements. And yeah, because I could see the the second hand there, and it's just moving nicely. Yeah. That looks sick. Thanks, man. Yeah, dude, he he made this watch. I know, dude. He does some crazy. <laughs> That's beautiful, man. Details. 
we wanted to come up with kind of a, a different way of attaching these. We haven't really seen anything that we love uh, the way that these two pieces intersect. We put our heads together and Ben and I came up with a pretty cool concept of how these can attach. And we're gonna do kind of an experiment on this base that I think is gonna be really cool. Essentially we are creating, um, we're gonna have aluminum rods going through here that hook up to an aluminum plate that create the substrate that hold the top. So we're gonna do an aluminum block here that matches these wedges. And we created a wedged dado in the side of the wood and we're going to have a countersunk hole in the top of this block. And as you drive in that block, the wedges are gonna be pushed down inside and the base is gonna tighten up from that. So um, as the base, the idea behind that is as the base moves, um, the wood moves and everything changes, you can adjust for that and you can adjust for the tightness and by just tightening that screw down. And that also this is now, um, it doesn't, it's never a permanent connection because if I glue this up, you have issues because this grain running this way, you have end grain here, you have end grain here, you have end grain here, here. So this joint is never gonna be a great joint if we glue it up. So we need to allow for movement and all that stuff. So this is like, in our minds, an excellent solution to this, this problem that we have. So we're here today with Darren and he's gonna work with us on creating a custom wedge piece for this. What I, what I kind of wanted to do was have your wedge sit flush on the top here. Mm -hmm. That way, if, if it ever gets loose and we need to tighten it more, I just remove material from here so it can set down deeper. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, just gradually do that. So your, your wedge only needs to go down like an inch to inch and a half okay. or so. It doesn't need to make that full, um, that full pass there. But um, yeah, man, let's, uh, maybe we mark these so you know yeah. kind of where my, the yeah. top is that. We were originally going to do this out of brass, but everything else on this table is aluminum. So this would be really cool to make into a, a product at a, a later time where it is all brass. In the connection, actually, there's a block on top and bottom, and it connects with a bolt. That's what Darren and I were talking about earlier. So this is inch and a half by inch and a half square aluminum. So I just chopped a piece off on the bandsaw and then milled it to like the rough dimensions that you sent in your sketch. So right now it's inch and a half wide, inch and a half tall, and inch and a quarter in width, I guess. So yeah, so I just needed these wedges. So I'm gonna figure out the exact taper of these wedges. And then basically all I'm gonna do is spot the hole in the top, well, that's something else I need to know. How big is the screw that's going in in here and Right, let's do like a, let's do a number 10 screw and it'll have, um, do you have countersinks? Uh, I have, I can countersink. Okay. Do you know what degree it is? I don't know the degree of it. Um, all of my countersinks are the same. So it's, um, they're like matched for woodworking. Okay. So that's not something that I generally need to know because it's, yeah, and it comes it just in one. Is yeah. yeah, okay. But um, if you, yeah, I don't know. If you can drop, I mean, I don't know. I wonder if that information is available on the interwebs. Probably. So it's a uh, number nine. Number, uh, let's do a, uh, just want to do a number eight or a number 10. Let's do, let's do a number 10. Is that a wood screw specific measurement? Um, or is that number 10 is a wood screw okay. thickness of the wood, the, the 10. I don't know if that's supposed to be like 10 millimeters or, or how they figure that out, but the yeah. number 10 is kind of a fatter screw. Okay, I'm sure I can Google it. Cool. And then, got to find out what the countersink is. Yeah, so what I'll do first is just chuck it up and then I scribe the center there already, but I can indicate it in. So I'll spot the center and countersink it, and I'll flip it over and just machine most of the material out and just leave the walls okay. the um, major diameter of the taper. Okay. So whatever the thickest point is. Sure. And then I'm gonna set up my tilting table to match the angle, clamp it in there, and just come <laughs> in with an end mill. Sweet. And then flip it around and do the same thing. Very and cool. then just any specific finish you want, no. Like what's the rest of the aluminum? Just it's like a straight grain, just 
it's kind of a rough it's a sanded finish so okay. it's not polished at all okay so yeah 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 i'll just uh it's like a straight grain it with like 220 or something like that yeah that's perfect yeah that's really all there is to it right on let's let's get some footage of this i'm gonna do some ig stuff too. uh we need to figure out what size that hole is so if you can, can find out like what the yeah, the, the, the taper? The major diameter of the uh, number 10 okay. wood screw. Then is uh, the nearest fraction is 3 sixteenths. Okay. Here's what it says. I mean, I don't know if you work in decimals, but 0.19 is number 10. And that's the shank diameter? It's the thread diameter, it looks like. Okay. So if I push a 3 16th drill through, it'll be a little bit oversized just yeah. from being a drill. So that's perfect. That and should then, work. Yeah, because I don't want it to thread into the brass or the aluminum. I want it to yeah. thread into the wood, mm -hmm. so that's fine. Um, so what we need to figure out now is the angle of the head. Yeah. Right? The angle of the taper? Yeah, what the countersink angle is. that's in here but I didn't know anything. this is a, the next one though like this is this is a prototype this is uh like let's see how this works when we do this out of brass and we actually yeah, got see it. it all the way through we can really dial it in yeah, I picked up a chunk of brass up on the table there before uh before I got your text about oh, you know, that, dude. no it's all good dude I, I use brass in the shop all the time anyway. deeper than this a little bit more I've got to touch more. That's it. Do this joint. They'll drill a hole all the way through and put a bolt in the nut. And I don't like that. It's like a, and that's, it changes the look, you know? Yeah. Like all of a sudden it's no longer like a, an elegant piece. It's no longer like um, clean, simple. It's like now you just threw an industrial bolt in it mm -hmm. and it's now now it's like mixing metaphors you could always put a if you counter something the nut in the bolt you could put like a dowel or something in right but then you would have yeah. the interruption in the but also like at the same time you're weakening it because you have your mortise and tenons in here yeah and you're pulling um, the material out and you're removing them so mm -hmm. you're 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 um also kind of jeopardizing the joint and you're compromising the structural integrity of your joint mm -hmm. because you're doing you're going right through a really important piece that holds the seam together on, yeah. on both the top and the bottom. So only the, this is the top right yeah, here? Yeah, this is the top. So the bottom right now, we have this. Okay, to the socket cap. Yeah. So what I have in my spindle right now is a face mill. And so in order for the wedge piece to fit well into the dado joint, I need to take 50 thousandths of an inch off either side. So 100 thousandths off the total diameter of the part so that the wedges fit into the dados correctly. Aluminum so it's just crazy soft. I was just cutting some of them that was loud as hell. <laughs>
these are this is how Gillette razor blades are made. <laughs> it's exactly the same process. Generally, you wouldn't use carbide for aluminum, but it's just what what's in there already. Yeah, so I started wearing an apron last year when I was fabricating the base for my rose engine lathe. I uh, got some metal particulates, some steel parts from grinding on my shirt, and when I went to take my shirt off to to get cleaned up at the end of the day, I got a piece of steel in my eye, and it ended up getting stuck and starting to rust, so I had to go to the uh, eye doctor for him to scrape it off my eyeball and scrape the rust ring off my eyeball, and then I had to put an ointment in my eye for a week. It's like putting uh, Neosporin in your eyeball for a week, and I was like, Fuck that, I'm not doing that shit anymore. So, got an apron so I can keep the uh, metal off my shirt. Way out of my eyeball. Yeah. No, it's, it's Augustine. Oh, Augie. Did he, did he end up FaceTiming you? Um, Lauren is FaceTiming me. There he is. Augie. Augustine, check out this equipment. This is my seven month old son. He wants to see <laughs> what we're doing. He's got to stay in touch. Doing some metal working, Augustine. It's so much fun. It's so quiet. It's so clean. In height that you're looking for as far as like how proud it sits off of the surface. Um, like, just so I know how deep yeah, to cut the channel. Yeah, I will do like... Um, These are total... Um, your depth? Yeah, the That's depth okay. of, the, of the wedges. That's but, okay. Um, if, we don't get to, if we don't get to a point where it starts to grab yet, then I'll, I'll shave some of this down and sink so it in. that it can sink yeah. in deeper. That might actually look It would probably look cool better. Yeah. Regardless, right? It would be really cool to even flush it up in there. Yeah. But um, the idea was just like over time, if it does need to, if it has room, it can easily shave it down. You just tweak it, yeah. It's the advantage of not gluing it all together, right? Because yeah. you have room to play. I'm just double checking these measurements here. That's the last person you should be asking. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you the most fun tool. Buy nice or buy twice. Yeah, and uh, I told him what to get. So is there a steel that you use to create whatever you're going to create and then you harden it and then it's tool steel or do you buy it already? Like how does that work? How does that process work? Either way. So heat treatable steels that you could do in like a home shop would be like um, A1, A2, W1, W2, yeah. and then O1, O2. Yeah. So the letter represents how it needs to be quenched or cooled. Uh -huh. So A1, A2 is air cooled. So you heat it up to a certain temperature and then you just let it cool in like, the atmosphere. Uh, w is you can quench it in water and then O is you can quench it in oil. Okay. And so they have different characteristics, but overall you get like the same product. So it's just whatever you're... So if we were gonna, if we were gonna make a, a little noisy cricket, a little tiny square, that has to be like, you know, really, really precise. Um, what would you use? What kind of steel would you want to use for that? How precise is really precise. Um, so if you need it within like a ten thousandth of an inch, which is like pretty tight tolerances even for metalworking equipment, mm -hmm. then what we would do is machine it to rough dimensionality, like within a thousandth of an inch mm -hmm. oversize, harden it and then have it uh, ground on like a surface grinder. Yeah. Which, I don't have a surface grinder, but it's not expensive to outsource that. So, it doesn't fit in right now because Cause it, that's the major diameter. Yeah, so that'll be at the thickest point mm -hmm. of the wedge. It'll be that total thickness. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I think that'll suit the purpose pretty well. Cool. All right. What's that thing? A thermometer? Oh, this? Yeah. Just an angle gauge. Oh, okay. Right on. This is another, I haven't even thought about that before. You have like your metal fabricators who basically are just cutting metal and they're gr um, grinding and welding. It's like the easiest thing. And then you have your 
what do you like your blacksmith who's forging steel mm -hmm. and um, shaping it and sculpting it and then you have like metal milling which is mm -hmm. another entirely different yeah, it's just like set different of levels of precision right yeah. so blacksmithing and it kind of falls into the era of when that was created and you can like follow chronologically metal working with industrialization yeah. of the world and so as things got more precise is when you saw like the exponential growth in industrialization for sure because when you make your first lathe the lathe is the only machine tool that can make itself so you can make another lathe on your lathe oh my god because you can do milling and turning operations on a lathe and so when you make the first lathe you make the second one a little bit more precise and just kind of like spirals into precision And you said something about you make the most pieces by hand? Uh, I think so, of, of like independent watchmakers in the United States. Oh, is that shit, man? Like, I know stuff like that is hard to say when you know you're gonna be, if you're gonna be put on YouTube. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> someone's gonna come out of the woodwork. So like, say, you know what, you serve a bitch. Yeah. I make the most. I yeah. file my shit. Then you yeah. just hide that comment. Yeah. Yeah. I put the metal in my mouth and I spit it out. This is. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know. I, mean, <laughs> I put the metal in my mouth and I spit out the watch face. I don't know what kind of tension should be on the wedge. You want to feel it out and see? That's a little... Clearance it out a little bit? Yeah. Ideally, it would be like hard Just to like... push, but it would bottom out okay. on the thing. Okay. So I would just like do little passes and we check it. Yeah. Um, that's going to be so nice, dude. Oh my God. Pull it out. Take Tiny bit off your side. <laughs> this is so <laughs> I knew that was gonna happen because he was pushing it down. Yeah, it's gonna work, right? Yeah, yeah. Tiny bit off. This is gonna be amazing. <laughs> People are just like, all right, all right. Dude, we have so many comments that are like, all right, guys, you're on our working <laughs> channel and. You know what? I haven't actually seen you guys build anything. You, know, you guys just have all this equipment and talk about how you build stuff, but I haven't seen you actually build shit. It's more of yeah. a meme channel than a yeah. channel. You guys are just funny guys. I think when we get to the end of this, to the delivery people are like, all right, guys. Yeah, they're going to be like, all right, okay, well, I'm not going to say anything anymore. I'm just going to go back and delete my comment here. <laughs> not, not, nothing, nothing ever happened yet. <laughs> like, who the hell else does this shit, huh? Like, not only is it a good idea, but we found somebody in our community who can execute it, come over here and spend the time to, to do that. Just a man in his workshop filing down the things. Did you come over here sing full time? <laughs> a radio. If you want to find me, I'm in my workshop filing. <laughs> I think this is it. We can Did you say he has a farmhouse table? Yeah, like in the center. Like that's that's called the farmhouse table. You can fine tune it with file sandpaper too. Because it's just on a taper that's just like barely out. Yeah. You only need to take a little bit off to get that. Yeah. Last bit. That's Go. exactly what you like. That's the height. Wow. Well, no, well, that, that's, supposed the, to, yeah, that's, that's supposed to sit flush in there. Um, well, no, with the screw, right? The screw will pull it. No, 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 no. We're oh. not using the screw to pull it. We want it to be like oh, super yeah. snug, tight, and then the screw is just like a set screw kind of. Oh, okay. Just kind of keeps it from backing out. Nice. But 
Alright, let's pull to cut a still of wet of film reels for our neighbor who I gave them for for free. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> and then, this is uh. This beautiful. Dude. Yeah. That is like perfect. So, um. Thin out a little bit more, huh? Yeah, you know what? We should probably leave. So, this is the concept that is now a reality. Um, thanks to Darren. It's beautiful. I love it. It's exactly what we needed. It's got the uh, the wedges on the inside, the tapered lines on the inside, and it's square on the outside. We got our counter sink here. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it inside of these slots, and we're going to force it down nice and tight. And it's not quite going all the way down, but that's good. That's that's what we want because now I'm gonna lightly shave off some of the wood until when I push this down really hard it sits flush with and seats on the bottom there and then we are going to put a screw in and that screw isn't to pull the wedge down that screw is to keep the wedge from backing out as the wood moves wow so this is going to be how this thing is held together that's, Dude, that's crazy so dope. yeah that's so dope. Do you like the um, 220 I grading do. on it, or do you want to go a little bit finer? No, not no. no I, I like it exactly how it is. Cool. For sure. We got to send Benny a little clip though, so I'm gonna push it back in one more time with my phone recording. So you're saying you couldn't just do that with epoxy? <laughs> Son of a. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you just so we use cast aluminum shavings in epoxy. <laughs> <laughs> Probably be more interested in that than what they're doing with it these days. You need to get them to pry with. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Dude, seriously. So Darren made this, this uh, this thing that we've been actually watching for the past two hours <laughs> on this video. <laughs> they're tight. <laughs> but uh, so Darren also has a YouTube channel. What's your YouTube channel again? Yeah. So my YouTube channel is DM Tiffany T I F F A N Y Time Pieces. Uh, Follow me on YouTube. Check me out on Instagram at dmtiffany.timepieces. I post a lot of progress on new machines that I pick up, machine restorations, but also documenting my watchmaking process. So I'm doing my first production run right now uh, and doing everything by hand on manual equipment, no CNC. So kind of a throwback to times of old in watchmaking. So. Heck yeah, we're gonna put all the, those links into the description for awesome. them. So cool. they'll be able to get it pretty quick. Uh, Will, what did you think about everything in your adventure in this? Man, I'm really disappointed in how everything turned out. I just wish it was a little bit more precise. I mean, it's only within a few thousandths of an inch and it's hoping for something better than that. But I mean, no, uh, seriously, no, like Phoenix is an incredible place. We have a lot of really talented people. Um, Darren has an amazing shop set up um, and um, he, helped us out killed this like way beyond my expectations and and i think it, it's it's gonna be an awesome an awesome thing darren's doing some next level shit. uh i can't wait to work with him more in the future yeah and uh hopefully we get to collab on something else man Hell darren yeah. awesome to meet you man yeah likewise dude thank Appreciate you so guys. much yeah stay in touch yeah you, you told me about it but i didn't see the actual crack but uh Remember when he like dropped a bunch of those starlets? We're never <laughs> gonna let him live that down. <laughs> it's in the video of you talking about that story. <laughs> so those other pieces that you already had in here, those Duncan are gonna be used, right? Idea what the hell we're so he's like <laughs> making a block. I don't really know what you're gonna do with the block. Yeah, so I have we're not no, using I have the wood no anymore. Idea. The wood was just. Oh, okay. Was the guy? This next operation probably not. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't know what that does.